If you, you hear a band for the first time or you hear a song for the first time, there's a certain emotion. Producing our own content, and which is more like a symphony, it's a journey through different musical styles. So there's something in it for everyone. So I became a sound engineer because I always was fascinated about sound and music. I listened to recordings and, and I thought, oh, that's so cool. My father is also a very good musician, so we had a Steinway piano at home. I learned piano, I learned drums. After I studied sound engineering, I worked as a freelance engineer for a lot of companies. Once my daughter was born, I had to focus on a, on a, more, uh, on a job that didn't incorporate too much work at night. So I worked uh, as an educator and uh, I joined Everett Institute and I uh, did a lot of teaching um, ever since, which is a great way to communicate uh, what I learned in the practical field to people. And in my new job here at Adam Hall, I can use this quite well. So as a field application engineer, my role is to support customers in using our products. I'm the back channel for customers that have wishes that, you know, they are seeking for a new product or a feature on the product. I'm also in charge of the product demos, so that's a big part. Um, that's a fun part also to work with the equipment and to do uh, interesting demos for customers to show what the products are capable of doing. When I was introduced to Myla and the PA system that we use here, uh, I was fascinated about the, the features, about the, the sound. So I said, I'm, I'm in. Uh, I can imagine working here and uh, be a specialist for Myla and also for the other products of LD Systems. This room is, is such a, it's such a great thing that we have this room to be able to show uh, lighting products and the sound products. When I first went into this room and saw what my colleague Darius did with the lighting, I was I was blown away, and I thought I had I have to with LD Systems with the sound brand, I have to make this up a little bit. I had a meeting with the CEOs, and I, I told them, well, I have this idea. Um, let's join the lighting and the audio um, brand in one presentation and also do it immersive because immersive that's you know the, the thing right now in the audio business a lot of bands are thinking about uh are using immersive um immersive loudspeakers in their tours already a lot of theaters are using uh surround sound or even dolby atmos installations and since the pa system that you know we we develop myla is so compact it was actually uh, a piece of cake to do the installation here. Um, and customers are coming here anyway. They're driving here for three hours. I wanted them to have an experience first because uh, not so much focusing on products, more about the, the feeling that you have when you hear the song for the first time. They wouldn't just hear the audio by itself or they will just see the light by itself. They will see a combination, a show. And this was more or less the, the reason for this project, to create a show, to be able to show customers a combination of products. Then the CEO said, well, that's great, do it. So I decided it would be a great idea to pull Darius, my colleague, my field application engineer colleague from Cameo, into the project. Let me think about the answer. Yeah. My first thoughts. What was my first thought? Oh, another light show. <laughs> I'm Darius. I'm the field application engineer for Cameo Light. I was designing the light show for the surround experience. So initially when the auditorium was built, my big wish was to have a combined light and show experience that we can combine our brands. And finally, when um, Jens approached me with his idea of having a surround experience, for me it was clear this is now the opportunity to have this, this overall show experience that we can show to the customer. 
So I'm not only a lighting specialist, I'm more or less a problem solver for the customer. Um, I try to, to explain the customer our products and also, if needed, uh, some uh, lighting fundamentals and try to help him to create or turn his vision into reality. Yes, yes, even if I'm driving in the car, listening to music, I hear it. And also my girlfriend, she says, um, you feel it, right? You see, you, you, you see a light show. And I'm like, yeah, I'm in my, I'm imagining a light show. I see something there. I feel something there. It's, it's different. I've never done a light show for a surround experience from many, many, many different positions. So during pre-production, it wasn't easy with a, with a stereo file to, to imagine from where the, the sound is coming. Sitting now here in the room uh, and now seeing the final result is, is very satisfying. This music has no vocals. You feel it on a, on a certain level, on, an, on another level. You're free to connect with the music. If there, is, if there are vocals, you're, you're, you're diving into a theme. And if there are no vocals, you are free to connect with the music and make up your own mind, what you hear, what you feel, what your imagination of the, of the situation is. And um, with this surround experience, it's, it's, with this song file, it's something different, yeah. I have two producers that I pulled into the project that I uh, knew for a long time working for Aberrett Institute. Um, one is John Marshall, who's, who's a very great hip-hop producer and artist as well. He's also doing film music. Um, and the other one is Jan Hennig uh, Kabuki, which is uh, one of the founders of the drum and bass scene here in Germany. He tours all around the world. And I always said, I want to do a project with you two guys once in my life. When I had this idea about producing music for this room, I immediately thought this is the, the chance to pull those two people in. And I'm very proud of, you know, being able to work with this team. My name is Fat John, lowercase f, lowercase j, uh, also known as Fat John, the Ample Soul Physician, period. <laughs> my connection here is Jens. Uh, he's a friend of mine. Jens, myself, and Kabuki have wanted to work together, and this was an opportunity. As an artist, this project excited me because it was an opportunity to make something that could only be heard in one place, on the planet. One of my main contributions was to write and put together this kind of slower tempo hip hop part of the production, but also to work with Jens and Jan to, to make the arrangement tighter all across the board from the beginning to the end. There were certain frequencies we needed to hit because we wanted to show off the capabilities of, of these devices. Th these frequencies would be captured and presented properly um, in this type of environment. Um, so hearing it, um, I was listening for the bass to make sure that the bass came through um, clear and not muddy. Because with a lot of bass sometimes, um, the low end can get muddied up, especially in that type of environment. Um, but it was clear and um, round. I got to experience it in its entirety. It's finished and it's something I'm proud of. I felt proud when I heard it. I guess I was always uh, very curious when it came to technology. Maybe that's partly from something I inherited from my father. He was, uh, he's very much uh, into, you know, repairing stuff and I always looked over his shoulder when he was sawing and cutting and, and drilling. 
you know, having a, that love for technology and seeing technology as a means for creativity. So that's why these days I rarely touch an instrument anymore. It's all about thinking about composition and then finding ways how to express it through algorithms, through patches, and just kind of be surprised uh, with, the, with the end result. So my name is Jan Hennig. I'm better known by my uh, artist name Kabuki. And I'm a musician, I'm a sound designer, I'm an artist. So Kabuki is a, a classical a form of Japanese uh, theater. And um, I just kind of really liked the, the connotation of the name because the actor actually can play different roles depending on the masks they wear. So you will have the same performer being able to play different uh, parts in a production. So for me to have that freedom to say like, I don't have to just be one particular artist, but I can have many different or showcase many different facets of my creativity. This was really like why I felt really attracted to that name in the first place. Then my contribution to the, to the project has been multi-layered. So for my section, the last um, section of the piece, there's a electric guitar solo and also a rhythm track. We invited Daniel Stelter to the studio. And I was also recording Jens as a, uh, in his function as a drummer. And I was the recording engineer in that particular section. So my job was to really make sure that he feels comfortable, that he um, can um, kind of deliver the performance that, you know, we, we need so that that requires for him to be able to just focus on the instrument and I really have to focus on all the technical aspects and make sure that you know there's no redlining no microphones don't cut out he can hear himself I started to review the material of the tracks that Jens prepared for us figure out what's the musical idea behind it and then kind of uh, repurpose that um, cut it apart, put it back together in a different uh, order, and then orchestrate it, play other instruments that complement it, add percussion, add drums. And um, that's kind of how we filled in the blanks. So that was an interesting challenge, you know, for me to wear so many hats on this project. You have to understand also, like, if you do something on your own and you have full control, you can do whatever you want, but if you work with other people, you have to understand, okay, what is it that they do? You know, where do my ideas or my responsibilities intersect with theirs? And then how can we make something out of it that is really kind of a, a, a whole, you know? It's no point something being 100% me, but sticking out and not matching the, the overall idea, you know? So for me, I'm always satisfied when I feel like this this makes sense as a whole. I wanted to have the experience for customers that they hear a real orchestra and surround. I knew uh, I would need someone that would be able to arrange an orchestra. I would need an, a big orchestra, not just a, a, a you know a few violins, a big orchestra. So that was the time where I contacted Matthias Rauer, which is uh, uh, also a, a teacher and an educator. He's a professor for, for um, composition and for music at the at Ludwigsburger uh, Film Academy. Um, and uh, I asked him, I have this idea of, of, a, of a project, would you be able to arrange an orchestral part for it? And he said, just give me a, a few chords, an idea, and now we'll make something great out of it. Well, it was, a, it was hard work because it was written by a drummer. <laughs> and to arrange orchestra for a drummer's composition yeah, means uh, to, uh, to arrange exact uh, on his uh, imagines of beats. And since he's uh, also the connection to the film orchestra, Deutsches Filmorchester Babelsberg, he um, actually arranged a part. And when I came to his studio and I, I gave him a piano part that I wrote and I said, well, and also have a guitar part that I wrote. And first of all, focus on the guitar part and arrange an orchestra for this. And then when I came to his studio, he said, I'm already done. 
So I had to listen to it and he actually arranged not only the guitar part, he also arranged the piano part because he was inspired by it. And I said, well, it's, I, I had a doubt if this, what I gave him as a co composer would be sufficient, but what he made out of it really uh, blew my mind. And I said, okay, that's gonna be cool. So um, I had to use short notes, uh, exact accents, uh, and I had to bring it together with his kind of, uh, yeah, drummer's feeling. And uh, he was the one that also uh, arranged the piece so the orchestra can actually play it. Um, so uh, that was a big part of the whole production, to have this orchestra in it. Many orchestras are not used to play uh, really exact rhythm parts. Mm -hmm. Uh, because an orchestra is a, a big uh, community of about 60 people and uh, so uh, to get it really rhythmically, uh, hard rhythmically, is complicated for them. But the Babelsberg Orchestra is quite used to things like that and so uh, I think it was a good solution to do it with them. It's very impressive to hear this uh, powerful strengths of these loudspeakers. Uh, the clearness uh, of the frequencies uh, is impressive. Uh, you can hear every part in the music very different. But then the mixing part comes. And, you know, mixing a production uh, with this size, with this amount of tracks, is, is not very easy. I think he felt like his project was, was going to be in, in safe hands when, when giving it to me. So, well, I hope he did anyway. <laughs> I have a friend in UK, a producer named Peter Walsh. My name's Peter Walsh. I'm a London-based record producer and sound engineer and mix engineer. He's a very experienced, award-winning uh, engineer and has worked with Peter Gabriel with Simple Minds. He has also worked with orchestra music, but also with rock bands. When I talked with him about the idea and about the concept, he was, he was in. I mean, there's, there's a lot of information here. And I think, um, yeah, I think he was quite honest to say that, that, you know, he needed someone with a lot of experience. I've been mixing 5.1 since the, the 90s when I worked with Peter Gabriel on Secret World. Surround sound is it's, it's an acoustic audio experience. It's also it's also emotion, very emotional. Basically, um, giving the listener a, an experience more than just on two speakers. So, actually, sort of um, getting them to feel the, the emotion in in a, in a piece of music. One of the most important things in a surround mix is is finding the sweet spot. You know that that place where you can actually stand and um, get a, the, the sort of perfect uh, balance between the speakers and hear it as it's been mixed. Um, I mean, in this room, it's, it's easy because I've got a, an orange sticker down here, which uh, we put in there when, when Dolby Atmos came in and lined up the speakers. We did the mix in London. I heard it here in this uh, auditorium and I marked down what changes we need to make. Then we we got back to Peter, he did the changes, and we heard it back in this room. So this was the mixing process, more or less, and actually worked out quite well. So if I get it right in this room, the chances were that it would be right in, in uh, the auditorium, or right anywhere, really. I think a certain amount of it comes down to, to a balanced mix. How music's perceived, um, very much depends on how it's mixed, you know, you could... Um, but but a, perf a good performance will always shine through, no matter how it's mixed, really. It's hard to, you know, destroy a great performance. For me, it was a big relief uh, when I heard the finished product the first time here and when I saw the lighting, 
because if you have a vision in your head, every producer has, has experienced this. You, you never know if you reach this vision 100%. It was a great feeling to, to see that everything came together, together nicely. It even exceeded my expectations. I also wanted to show in this project what's Adam Hall about. I think here in the company, almost everyone I know is a musician, is an operator, uh, is, has this passion, deep passion for event technology. And it's called Experience Center. So when the people come here, they should have a special experience they can just have here. And this is a big reason why we did this project, to do this exclusively and to, to, to have this show character that you can just have in this hall here. My future plans for this auditorium here is to step up to Dolby Atmos system. And uh, I would love to see performers, musicians coming into this room and using this new surround setup for their live performance. I think it's so great that we have a room like this and uh, it should be used for music. <laughs>